We've already looked at indefinite integration, and I mentioned definite integration, so that's what we're looking at here. Uh, you found that for an indefinite integral, you ended up with something that was a function in terms of x. For a definite integral, which we do between limits, we'll end up with a value. So I'll show you an example. Given that the rate of change of displacement, s meters, of a particle at time t is given by ds by dt equals 4t squared plus 2t, find the total displacement from t equals 1 to t equals 3. So these are what we're talking about with the limits. I want to know between 1 and 3 what was the displacement. I am just going to pause briefly and see if you can think about how you might do this question. So we've got the rate of change of displacement and we want to find the displacement. So if I integrate this, I'll get the displacement and then I can just substitute in one and substitute in three and we should be able to find how much that's changed by. So integral of four squared plus two t or with respect to t. I'm gonna integrate that one so that increases to 3t cubed. This was a 4, so divided by the new power. And this part goes to t, uh, 2t squared, so t squared and the 2 divided by the 2 is just 1. So that's that. And the constant of integration. And S is equal to that. So we're going to find out the dis what the displacement was when t equals 1 and what the displacement was when t equals 3. And then if we do the answer to this one, subtract the answer to that one, we'll know how far it's moved in that time. So so we get uh, 4 thirds t to the power of 1, which is just 4 thirds. Let's put S equals. Uh, t squared is just 1, and C, we don't know. 4 thirds plus 1 is 7 thirds. And let's just use when t equals 3 as well. So I've got 3 cubed, that's 27, divided by 3 is 9, times by 4, is 36 plus 3 squared so that's 45 plus c and I really should have s's in there just try just about let myself enough space so this one take away this one and you'll see that the c cancels with the c which is nice and I'll pick up on that later on so it's essentially 45 plus c take away 7 thirds plus c 45 take away 7 thirds is, well, this is 2 and a third, so this is 42 and 2 thirds. Displacement from 1 second to 3 seconds, the particle went 42 and 2 thirds meters. Okay, right, here's another one. Integrate this function between the limits of 2 and 6. So this time I'm going to show you how we write these out and the standard layout. So I'm going to say integral of this. So still that symbol. 2x squared plus 3. Now we are integrating with respect to x. And then the limits, the 2 and the 6. So the 2 is our the lower of our integrals and the 6 is the upper of our limits, sorry, 2 and 6 are the limits, lower limit, upper limit. So that's our first step, we write it out like that. Then we integrate this. So this is x squared goes up to x cubed. 2 is already there and we're dividing it by the new power. 2 thirds x cubed. This goes to plus 3. With the x on the end, constant of integration, and then the thing that you wouldn't know unless somebody showed you 
is that to show that we're going to use a definite interval and essentially substitute the 6 in and substitute the 2 in and then subtract them like we did last time, square brackets are used for that. We still put the limits here. So knowing what's going on here with the integral and the way we're writing out, this is the standard thing. We're going to do this. This means that we're then going to substitute 6 in and then we're going to substitute 2 in and we're going to subtract them. But there's nothing here that says you're going to subtract them, but that's just how it works. So it's just substitution now, really. So all of this with x equals 6. Hmm. 6 cubed. I am going to resort to calculator. I know 6 cubed is 216, but so 2 thirds of 6 cubed, 144. So that's 144 plus 3 lots of 6, 18 plus the C. So that's the bit with 6 substituted in. And then I'm going to substitute the bit with 2 in. So 2 cubed is 8, so this is 16 over 3, plus 3 lots of 2, so that's just 6, let's see. So it's very common to put the first one in brackets and then put the second one in brackets because you're going to subtract them. Um, and if these have got negatives in here, it's very easy to get yourself muddled up. So check the same these really. I'm just going to go ahead and type that into a calculator now, but again, notice that the C minus the C is going to cancel, so that doesn't matter, we don't know what it is. Uh, so let's just go uh, 144 plus 18, that's the first bracket, 16 over 3, plus 6, oh dear, no, that's not right, plus 6. Please to call that. So that's 34 over 3. So 162 minus that answer. I'm just going to leave it like that. 452 over 3. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out here. The so plus C. So obviously, I've spent a long time going on about how you mustn't forget your plus C when you're integrating. But actually, for definite integrals, we don't need that plus C there at all. That's the only thing I did in this layout that's a bit unusual. We wouldn't normally bother to put the plus C in. I did it in this example just to show you that they cancel and it doesn't matter. So we wouldn't normally put the plus C in for a definite integral. And if anything, this makes it worse because now you're in a situation where sometimes you don't need to bother putting it in, but other times you do. So you definitely put it in for an indefinite integral and you don't need it for a definite one. Feels the wrong way around, but still. Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing I wanted to point out is your calculators can do definite integrals. So let's just quickly show you how to do that. So uh, just the normal mode of one for this. You've got an integral button right here. So press that one. I always find it a little bit tricky to work out where to put the different things, but 2x squared plus 3 goes in here. So you don't have to integrate it, you put the function in. So 2x squared, that's not squared, squared, there we go, uh, plus 3, uh, if I move across, it takes me to the lower limit, which was 2, across again, takes me to the upper limit, which was 6, and if I just press equals, we get the same answer that we had before, which is nice. So, obviously your calculators can help out a lot with these, and immediately that means that some of you are going to go, well, what's the point of doing this then, I can just type it in there, well, the reason we have to learn how to do it like this is for questions like this one. So have a quick read of that one and begin to think how you might do that. All right, so one thing I want to ask as well is why is this necessary here? Why do you need to say that P is greater than zero? Well, it's because of these limits here. This has got to be the lower limit, and that's the upper limit. If P was 0, these would be the same. And if C, P is less than 0, then this one's actually higher than that one, and they're the wrong way around, and we don't want that. So that's just clarifying what's going on there. Um, otherwise, we're going to integrate it and leave our answer in terms of P. Well, it's already written like this. 
I am just going to rewrite this part because we don't really like x in the denominator if we can avoid it. So this is the same as the integral of x. Well, this is square root of x, so that's a power of a half, but it's reciprocal of that, so power of negative a half plus 4x squared. So I haven't actually done anything there. I'm just rewriting that in a format I prefer. Respect, respect to x, I'm going from p to 9p. Okay, that's my first bit. So now I'm going to actually do the integral. You can pause and do it yourself first if you want to. But I'm just going to go ahead. So increase this power by 1. So that's negative a half plus 1 is positive a half. Divide through by the new power. Dividing by a half is like multiplying by 2. And this part, so x squared goes up to x cubed. And 4 divided by the new power. Okay, now I've done the integral, so I just need to point out that I'm going to substitute my limits in. Square brackets, p, 9p. That looks like a p. Uh, and then it's just substitute 9p in, substitute that in and go from there. It's going to get a bit messy, I think, but I'll do my best. So 9p in here. So that's the square root of 9p. And there's two of those. Plus 4 thirds times 9p. And that's all cubed. Put them brackets, and I'm going to take away what we get when we put p in. So this is two lots of root p and p, uh, p cubed, I say, p cubed, four thirds of that. Adding those bits together, but all of that is being taken away from the first part. Oh, I keep forgetting my equals here. So, um, oh, you notice I didn't bother putting in the plus c because, like I just said, it doesn't matter. So two lots of the square root of 9p, well, root 9 is 3, so this is two lots of 3 root p, so 6 root p. Let's see if we can tidy this up a bit as well. So 4 thirds times 9 cubed p cubed, well, the p cubed is enough. Let's just resort to the calculator again. 4 thirds of is it 9 cubed 972 okay and then this one well that's just 2 root p's and that's just 4 thirds don't really need to do anything there so subtracting 6 root p's take off 2 root p's 4 root p, and 972 take off 4 thirds. This is 1 and a third, so that would be 971 take off another third, so it's 970 and a third. I already don't like the way I've written that. Lots of p, let's just convert that. Uh, so 972 take off 4 thirds, let's write that as. There we go. Leave your answer in terms of p. Well, yep, it's in terms of p. And obviously, I couldn't just type that into my calculator. It's not going to let me put um, algebra into the limits. If it did let me do that, then that's a type of calculator that we're not allowed to use. So that is definite integrals.